This is a tandem, and I'd never heard of this company. I know some of you probably already have. Uh, I am not by any means an expert or even really an amateur in uh, anything to do with computers or electronics. I am a beginner at best, but I want to learn. And so to me, that is really what this is all about. I want to learn what these things are and why they were and, you know, all little intricate little things about them. So uh, what, what attracted to me to this initially was I saw the photo of it and the the drive, let's see if I can get some light over here. Yeah, so this drive right here, I recognized as the same type from my Apple II Disk 2 drive. And so I was like, whoa, what is this? And so I looked up this company, Tandon, and I uh, read a little bit about them. And I guess they made floppy drives and they made a whole bunch for IBM and like that kind of a thing. And I, I guess they decided to make their own computer. I had no idea. But um, so what is this computer all about here? Uh, I have this thing on one of those cutting mats. I can just spin it, spin it right off the table and fall on the floor. That would be nice. So we can move, move this around here and we can check this out. Let's go ahead and zoom. I'm using my iPhone on, a, on an arm. So there we go. We have Tannen Corporation. We have it's in Chatworth, California, USA. Model number. What does that say? 1M6004A or T? You know, it's T for Tandon. TM6004A. Got the serial number there of 33621. A little bit of information about the power. It has a combo monochrome printer, which is very common. My IBM 5170 had the same card or the same output anyway. I don't know what the card looks like inside yet. We have here a printer and we have down here keyboard. And then whatever, cap for whatever that was supposed to be. It's like a vent here. Yeah, pretty straightforward. So I think at this point what we need to do is we just need to pop the cover off and see what's going on in there. So let me see if I can find my screwdriver. All right, I'm assuming it slides off forward. Oh, it does. How far? How far? Oh, too far. Okay, let's flip it around then. Or at least go be sideways. All right, got it. All right, what do we have here that I can tell? All right, so first thing I'm noticing is the, um, let's see here. We have just 8-bit slots. Okay. I also see that there's obviously plenty of room for the longer cards, which it doesn't have, that slide into these rails. This is a very short monitor card. Okay, we'll, we'll pull that out in a second and take a look at it. Got memory over here. Let's see if we can do a little zoom in on those. I recognize those as part of the chips that were on my IBM. We have over here um, a CPU, it looks like. Let's see if we can get in there with some light. Let's get an 8088. Made in Intel 1978, it looks like. And then it's got an empty socket right next to it. So obviously it's Some sort of a, I don't know. Did an 8088 have a math coprocessor? Is that what that might be? It's a math coprocessor thing. So you can see where my ignorance comes in. I don't. There's a spider right here. Um, you can see what I'm, what I'm saying. I don't know enough about these. Like, well, I know like a 286 has a math coprocessor because I have one. I have the the 287. But what goes in? What would you put here? Okay, I don't know. Really interesting. All right. Here, let's, let's start, well, since I'm in here, let me go ahead and see if I can unplug this. There we go. So now we have that, so I can test for voltages in a bit. Let me get my little friend out of there. All right, so let's 
check the ROM chip or the BIOS, whatever. And it looks like it, yeah. Let's say AMD, advanced micro devices. Okay, made in Japan, the motherboard. Very dusty, but you know, not overly, you know, it's, it's normal, normal dust. Looks like the drives attached to the motherboard, but then what is, like this is a hard drive controller, I guess, and, and then these ones down here, like that is, a, a parallel printer port that's built on here. And then this one seems to be the floppy. Interesting. Interesting. Wow, okay. All right, well, let's uh, let's do a little bit of teardown here and see what we got and see how, go back to widescreen. Okay, let me see if I can well, let's start with this one. Oh, it's a Phillips. And it's a different color too. So it's like that was added at some point. Very small little screw. Okay, let's pull this out. I want to take a look at it. So the combination printer port Obviously, it'd have to be monochrome or black and white. Made in Taiwan. You got jumper four, enable, enable, enable printer, disable printer. So it's got enable printer. I don't necessarily need the printer. Well, I'm not gonna do anything either way, so it doesn't matter. We'll just, who cares? I don't know what those are for. Pen? I don't know. Beltron. It's got some memory chips on there. Okay. Yeah, not not too complicated of a card there. Pretty pretty straightforward and simple. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, we'll pull this one out as well and take a look at that one. Yeah, it's got a different screw too than the than the video card. So, wonder what the original one was. Okay, so here is the the disc controller. It's got some jumpers over here. Don't have any idea what they would do. You know, I'm I'm, I'm assuming that those of you that are watching this that already know the answers already know the answers. Uh, as I learn more about this stuff, I will be able to provide the answers, but at this point, as I said, I'm just learning about all this old old stuff and I don't know. I used a lot of I used a lot of this stuff when I was, you know, in high school. But using something and knowing what the hell is going on inside is completely different. Like I think my first computer what was it? First one I ever had, what was it? I think it might have been a PS2 Model 30. And then at some point I got a 386 and then a 486 and then went, you know, Pentiums and, and never looked back. Um, that was my first PC, like, you know, DOS-based PC. Like, before that I had an Apple IIc. So anyways, there we go. There's, there's that. Um, okay, so let me get a better look at cards, and, or not cards, but chips and stuff on here. So what we have... My, my my magnifying glass here, U two and U three. So I need to find out what what that would be. Uh, please comment below in the comment section if you know what that what the socket goes. I'm guessing so. I, I, my assumption would be some sort of a math coprocessor. Okay, so got eight bit slots. Like I'm not going to put a sound card in here. I'm not going to upgrade video or anything. I'm just going to keep it keep it as it was or as it is 
It's because it's, it's, for me, it's kind of a unique system. I've never even heard the brand. They kind of have a nice history. And when I mean nice history, I mean they have a history that is interesting. It's not a boring history. They were actually a big deal, at least in my opinion. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm, I'm very curious if this was the, this couldn't have been the original video card. So, so I wonder what they had in here before. Because like I said, this bracket is like really new. New, you know, it's a shiny one compared to everything else. And the screw is different. So they didn't even pop out a screw and then put the same screw back. It came with a different screw. And then they put that screw in. Because it's, it's like, a, it's, it's a completely different situation here. So I'm gonna make some assumptions here. So let's um, let's pull these things out and we'll check, uh, check what this is all about, right? So let me just spin this around. And we'll reposition the camera here so we can get a better view of the front. If you guys don't mind. Okay. Uh, looks like we're still doing Phillips. So let's do the hard drive first. Oh, went the wrong way. All right. So first to come off looks like a plastic cover. Oh. We got a treat in here. It's a secret treasure map. What is this here? AMT Final Test version 2.5. Here, let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. There we go. Okay, it's for, okay, so it's from the beginning of time. And a, you know nobody nobody did the test at, at no station. All right, I'm not gonna read these to you because you can read them yourself. I'll just go slow and you can also just pause the video if you're really curious. Trying to read it with you guys, but I'm not actually keeping up. Okay, so defects detected, first four tracks. Data errors. Head one, track 112, byte, whatever that says. Is it 6054? Another one, head two, track three, byte, zero, or 09518, is that right? Okay. So it's just a test report for the hard drive. That's interesting. All right, we'll leave that out for a second. I will put it back because it goes with the computer as far as I'm concerned. Okay, uh, check your volume. Oh, check that out. That looks like a button. I don't know what it is, but it's cool. Okay. Should be able to slide this forward now. Nope. The brackets are hitting. Okay. Little retaining brackets there. Let's go back to 0.5. Sorry about that. Uh, little retaining brackets. Right, I'll stand up so I can see the back. All right, we're gonna. The speaker down there in the bottom. Okay, keep it away from the magnets that are on my um, soldering board. Okay, yes, yeah, so we have the speaker there, the cables, the cable, the power supply. All right, now let's pull the uh, floppy drive out. 
put the hard drive to the side for a second so I don't break it or lock, knock it off my desk. You know what I'm not, what I'm not seeing is a battery, which is good and bad. Good in that um, no battery leakage. Bad in that, so I just pulled the cover off, really. All right, so this, these two screws on the side. Yep, came loose. All right. And what do we have here? Okay, we'll go with that. What else? Power. Okay. All right, so there is the drive. Okay, can we see what the label says? Yes, it's upside down because that's how the camera is oriented right now. Sorry. Okay. All right. Well, let's peek it. So it's, I'm really, it's really curious that what are these do? These are for the speaker. Okay, that's the speaker. Okay. So let's um, let's do a better job. So I wonder if the the floppy drive hits on this. Okay. So we have. Floppy controller is, is on the motherboard itself. That's really interesting. And, and there's an exterior parallel, parallel printer port or whatever, also connected directly to the, the motherboard. Um, obviously, I should pull everything out and take the motherboard out so I can see what's under here. I, I know there's some chips under there and whatnot. Uh, I don't. I just don't know how far I want to really tear this apart. Like, what's the point other than to show you guys? But I mean, is there anything about this motherboard that you know is like unique enough to where you need to see this this little spot right under here? You know, like there's the memory it goes up to there. It actually li literally ends right there at the end there. So you can put memory in, take it out with the motherboard in there. I mean, I do see that there's a chip peeking out underneath there, and I, I guess I do have some curiosity what that is, but how much curiosity do I really care? I don't know. I just feel like maybe I shouldn't, um, I shouldn't go that much further into it. I mean, it's not a big deal, but yeah, I don't know. I think we'll put it back together and say, call it a day. If, uh, if there's something you guys absolutely have to see that's in there, I mean, I suppose I could, but um, it won't be in this video. It'll be in some kind of a follow-up video. Okay. Plug in the power. There we go. Yeah, it seems to hit it seems to hit on the, um, the speaker. Okay. Speaker cable, the connector on there. All right, here we go. I can't seem to find the threads. I guess I need to turn it a little bit so I can actually see and not try to eyeball it. There it is. Okay. 
which way did this go? Go like this. I think so. Or did it go? Nope. Okay, went this way. I'm gonna have to move the camera a little bit. Sorry, guys. I haven't charged this thing in a long time. Keep expecting it to go dead. Okay. Then we gotta put the hard drive back in. Oh, all right. Yep, this way. Put it on the top. It's a single DIN though, so it's like I have room for a um, a single you know single depth or whatever single DIN floppy drive. I'm not sure I need one, but there's room for one. I guess I could get like a GoTech floppy emulator or something and put it in there if I want to install stuff. But um, we'll see. We'll see if, what it, what it does. You know, I mean, I don't I don't know what to do with these things other than like. Um, set them up and like show what they what they did back then and why people used them or whatever but it's usually it wasn't for like games or something it was usually for things like uh, bookkeeping and run your business you know you you do the sales and taxes and you know, whatever it is people did it certainly wasn't playing you know games So what am I gonna do? Like put Load Runner on there? Figure out how to put like a joystick port? And it's like, no, I, I have other computers for those kinds of things. Which is coming up in the next video because I just got them. So I gotta, I gotta break them down and see what they are. Do they boot up? Do they work? Because I have only like emulators and stuff right now. Okay, so I need to now test the voltage on this and see, first of all, if this thing catches on fire and then we'll test voltages and we'll see if this is good to go. So when the, the, the drives are plugged in, it creates a load on the power supply and then the load on the power supply will tell us if there's enough voltage left over to run the system. Um, ideally, you put a, a drive you don't care about in there and you just unplug this right here and you plug it into something that um, you literally could not care less if it burns down, catches on fire, falls over and, and sinks into the swamp. But, um, but yeah, I don't know, I'm a risk taker, so here we go. Okay, where is my multimeter? There it is. All right. So we are gonna go to voltage, make sure we're on DC, and we're gonna, oh, I gotta plug it in. I got a cord over here ready to go, I think. Yep, here it is. And as I make more videos and upload them to YouTube, I am going to perhaps invest in a better idea of what I'm doing here. Like I might build some sort of a, a contraption that goes over my entire desk where I can mount cameras onto it so that I can use different cameras for different things. Like I have a little microscope camera for fine, and I do like soldering and replacing capacitors or whatever, I can really get in there and do it. And I have a webcam that locks up constantly and makes me angry, but none of them have as wide of a field of view as my iPhone. So that's why I, I can't really use those because you would, you would only see like this much at a time and it just drives me crazy. So, okay, let's flip it on, see what happens. All right, everybody listen. This is the uh, power on sound. Oh. Dang, I forgot to put this back in there. I'll just tuck it in behind the power supply. There we go. Or the um, hard drive. Okay, here we go. Everybody listen. 
and watch, watch for flames and fire and smoke and Okay, I don't see any problems yet. Let's see what we got. Can you guys see the numbers on there? All right, so starting with the, the negative voltage, we have a minus 11.56, that's close to 12. Okay, and then we have, I think these are going to be the, the 12 volt lines. 11.56, 11.56, and these are going to be the um, 5 volts, 4.96, 4 4.96, 4.96, was one of these the minus 4.96, or are they all positive? They're all positive. Are they supposed to be? Yeah, I guess they are. Yeah. So that looks like good voltage, guys. All right. This is where we're going to see. Okay, I, I got to get a monitor here. So I'm going to stop this video really quick. I got to get a monitor hooked up to this thing. I have an IBM monitor that I can use, and that's what I'll do. So give me one second. Okay. So I got my IBM monitor that went with my... My 5170, which I, I'm going to do a video on that as well. I've already done all the video. I just haven't um, edited it. So go ahead and plug this cable back in on the motherboard. I forgot to do that. I can't see. Whoa. There we go. All right. All right, put... Just put this under so it kind of angles it cool. That should do it. All right, everybody, hold your breath. See what happens. Oh, I didn't, hold on. Oh, well, it's already booting. I didn't plug a keyboard into it. Here, let's see if I can. Okay, that was the floppy drive. I was trying to read a disk. Oh, oh, cool, check that out. Here, can we get a better, there we go. Okay, so it's 1180, in menu works 2.0, copyright 1987, PC Dynamics Incorporated. WordPerfect, Microsoft Word, park the hard drive, exit, and it's got some F1 through F10 menu items over here. Use the keypad keys to highlight and select and press enter. Use the keypad keys. Okay, that's interesting. All right, well, let me um, plug in a keyboard. I don't know if you can hot swap the keyboard. Oh my gosh, dropping everything. All right, so I have here my Model M keyboard. With an, with an adapter from PS2 to that kind, whatever that is called, AT. So let's go ahead and plug this in. All right, it says use the keypad keys. <gasps> okay, um, it did something. I saw it move and then it, it says exit. So, so do I have to turn numlock on? Let me see, Num, uh, scroll lock. Is there a num lock on these? Scroll lock, print screen, insert, page up, down, end. Yeah, there is a num lock. Okay. So how do you turn num lock on? Oh, right there. Yeah, I can't do anything. F keys? I'm just getting nothing. Error. Okay. Enter didn't do anything for exit.
Yeah, press. Yeah, so it's, it just it doesn't like the keyboard. It probably doesn't have a BIOS that even understands what the keyboard is. It probably needs like a. So you know it's okay. All right. Well, without the proper keyboard, I don't think I can go any further. But that was interesting. Okay. So we have a working-ish, a working-ish Tandon 8088 system here with a hard drive. And it looks like something that mimics my Apple II. All right, time to put this thing all back together, guys. Are underneath the monitor now. Here, I gotta just put the monitor away. It goes to my IBM anyway, not to this. All right, unplug. Swap the flathead back, and I can go back to business here. Very interesting little build here, guys. Very neat, very neat little computer. And with that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get on to the next video now. You guys all have a good night. Please like, comment, subscribe, all those things.